Jonathan Keats is cooking in the kitchen, there are two things you need to know. One, it's likely not edible, at least in the conventional sense. And two, he's creating an experience. I have created textbooks that the bacteria read by literally passing through the page, through capillary action, they're drawn through the paper. Yep, you heard right, he's making textbooks for bacteria. Of course, the whole exercise is an interpretive translation. I'm painting patterns that are equivalent in a way to the diagrams that we might get in our textbooks that we see with our eyes. They're tasting their way through physics instead. This isn't the first time Jonathan has created an experience for the inanimate. In New York, Jonathan had plants stand in a theater and look at what he calls plant pornography. Plants being able to perform photosynthesis are very good at uh, perceiving light and of course that is the essence of film. So I started out as, as any filmmaker does, making pornography. I, I filmed bees pollinating flowers and opened a porn theater for houseplants and they seemed to enjoy it well enough, but no other filmmakers came along to expand upon this new medium. Now he's making travel documentaries. Plants can't go anywhere, they're rooted in the ground. I'm bringing foreign skies to plants in New York City so that they might be able to uh, see the world vicariously. But today, Jonathan is focused on educating the bacteria of the world. I decided to start with science because it seemed to me that science was really the most universal part of our culture. I'm initially trying to teach bacteria the most fundamental principle in general relativity, which is the equivalence principle. Gravity is equivalent to acceleration. This is how he does it. I've cut some wax paper into the pathway pattern that will be ironed into the filter paper so as to be able to create a path for the water and for the bacteria to run through the text. With his no bacteria left behind philosophy, Jonathan had to find a language that the bacteria would understand. There are approximately 300 species of bacteria in the human mouth and I wanted to appeal to as broad an audience as possible. It ends up bacteria love sugar and MSG. Here I have my MSG in three different concentrations. Each of them dyed with a higher concentration of blue food colorings. On the other side, I have my sugar because that's the pattern that I've worked out for teaching the equivalence principle to the bacteria. Now that the curriculum has been drafted, it's time to educate the masses. I am going to lick it in order to introduce my oral microbiome, all 300 species of it. It's a bit sweet. When it's good and licked, the bacteria are going to travel the path that I have cut using the wax. And so first they're going to run through the experience of acceleration. Then they are going to run through a second experience, which is going to be of increasing gravity. And they're going to find that the experiences are equivalent in terms of the time that they are spending in each of these chemical environments. It will take a while for them to get all the way through the book, uh, though not as long as a course in quantum mechanics would take for a human. And that from the standpoint of education today is not bad. And from the standpoint of book publishing, uh, that would probably make this a bestseller. And at the end of this journey of enlightenment, there's only one thing left to do. This end is a bit salty. So, as you can see, when Jonathan is shopping at the local market, there's a lot of interest in what he'll be fixing up next. Hey, John, how are you doing today? What's your latest endeavor? Oh, I'm making textbooks for bacteria. That sounds pretty crazy. I want to inspire that curiosity by setting up situations that are strange and also funny. Uh, when people laugh, they let down their guard and they can think about things in a way that's a little bit less structured. So, if you're invited to dinner at Jonathan's house, you may need to clarify who will be digesting his creation. 
you or your bacteria. These are Canada's top athletes of the small seas. They race small boats, but they've been invited to Auckland, New Zealand to come and play on a big boat. You gotta love a city that's built around sailing. The boat is an open 60. It's an offshore racer. It's designed for going around the world, fast, short-handed sailing. Kiwi Dan Slater has been a competitive sailor for years for New Zealand. Now he wants to see if he can inspire these Olympians to sail in the big seas. It was an opportunity that was given to those Olympic sailors to develop a skill that isn't readily available in Canada. There isn't a big boat scene, really. The boat is christened O oh Canada as a nod to her Canadian roots. She looked so long, sleek, fast, and I hadn't even been on her. Feels like you can take it down to the Southern Ocean without uh, any, any troubles, for sure. Canadian Derek Hatfield limped this boat into Auckland after a failed round-the-world attempt in the Vendee Globe Race. I got involved with O Canada. Well, it wasn't O Canada then, it was actually Spirit of Canada when Derek Hatfield owned the boat. Hatfield had to drop out of the race, so he left the boat behind and the O Canada project began. OK, now what do we do with the boat and how do we uh, revamp it really and give it a rebranding and give it a new life? What better way than to throw some Canucks on board and see how she flies? We haven't really had enough time in the boat to find the limit, so while the Canadians were on board, part of that time was finding limits. But before limits can be tested, basics must be learned. These salty dogs here are used to sailing near the coast. This boat is made for the open seas. This is more like a Dakar rally car. It's, you're spending a lot of time in this boat. You don't come in after an hour's sailing. You spend night after night in the ocean. I was very worried that we were going to lose a finger. OK, hoist. On some of those winches, there's up to four tonne of load. Watch your fingers. <laughs> Sailing's an experienced sport, and especially a boat like that, you can't just jump on and expect to be able to control it very well. That first introduction to the boat was uh, you're a little awestruck, right, by all the, all the new big technical systems. It was all quite overwhelming. There were so many ropes, blocks, lines. Um, there was so much on the boat. Before the crew kissed the shore goodbye, 